Welcome back everyone. Well, guess we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a comparison between the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 7, which is on my right. Now, typically I do these on a table, but I figured I might as well try them by the window. If you guys like it, let me know. If you don't, then I'm never going to do it ever again. But I figured this comparison may not get in a lot of views anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But the iPhone 7 came out originally in 2016, and it's over four years old at this point. You can easily pick one of these devices up for like less than $100, easily less than $130. The iPhone 12 Pro, on the other hand, is that $1,000 phone still. So let's go and see how they compare. Now, I'll find the cheapest ones of both of these. Link them down in the description below. You can get them from Amazon. Helps support the channel at the same time. Now, side by side, you can definitely tell that the iPhone 7 is a much bigger phone overall than the iPhone 12, or the iPhone 12 Pro is a much bigger phone than the iPhone 7. And as always, if I stack them up on one another, you can kind of get an idea of how they both kind of hold up. You can see that the, you know, just the whole entire phone of the iPhone 7 can pretty much fit into the display of the iPhone 12 Pro, which is really insane to me. The iPhone 12, the iPhone 7 has that 4.7 inch panel on it. And it's a really good panel for the most part for a 2016 phone. It's not ugly. Of course, it has a lot of bezel on the top and bottom, but I think that's kind of understandable for this day and age. I think it's okay. You know, when this phone came out in 2016, I really don't think anybody expected anything super crazy, so it's totally okay. But nowadays, it does seem a little outdated, especially compared to something like the iPhone 12 Pro's 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED panel. Now the panel on this thing is super crazy. I think it's really good. It doesn't have like a 90 hertz or 120 hertz panel, but I think for the most part, it's a really good panel. And I think for day-to-day -day use, you're going to have a really good time with it. But definitely compared to something like the iPhone 7's panel, you're going to be getting a far better panel on the iPhone 12 Pro than on the iPhone 7 for sure. Now flipping them to the side, you can definitely see that in my opinion, the iPhone 7 is a little bit thinner than the iPhone 12 Pro, so keep that in mind. It's not really a crazy amount, but you know, if you're going to day, go day to day, you're definitely going to feel like you have a much thinner phone with the iPhone 7 than the iPhone 12 Pro, and it's also pretty heavier too. Now on the back you can see we have a little bit of a different setup. The iPhone 12 Pro has the full glass, a frosted glass back which makes this phone feel extremely premium. But the iPhone 7 has that standard aluminum feeling device to it. It's not bad, it's not ugly, and it definitely feels pretty premium even to this day. But I still prefer, you know, the iPhone 12 Pro's frosted glass back. It makes this phone feel that much more smoother and it makes it feel that much more premium as well. Now above those, we do have the cameras, triple camera setup with LiDAR on the 12 Pro, single camera setup on the iPhone 7. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. Now in terms of the software standpoint, obviously we have iOS running on both, so nothing super crazy there. However, I will tell you the iPhone 7 is set to only get one more version of iOS and then that's it. So it's probably going to stop getting software support at iOS 15. So we still have another year or two of software left if it gets security updates with the iPhone 12 Pro. It's pretty much going to be lasting forever. It's going to be lasting for an insane amount of time. So you can still pick up this phone today and still feel like you have a very, very premium, very current phone. So it's not like tomorrow this phone is going to be outdated. This phone is going to be relevant for many, many years. So that's pretty a, a pretty big difference. So keep that in mind. So in terms of software, that pretty much covers it up as well. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of a speed comparison between both these phones and see which one is the faster one. I'm pretty sure the 12 Pro is going to be faster. The iPhone 7 had that Apple 10 Fusion chip inside of it with 2 gigabytes of RAM. With the iPhone 12 Pro, on the other hand, has that Apple 14 Bionic chip inside of it with 6 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go and see which one is the faster phone between both of these. Okay, now that we're back, all the apps are cleared out in the background as you guys can see. So let's start loading them up. Let's go ahead and do the app stores. 3, 2, 1. And you can see the iPhone 12 was just, 12 Pro was so much faster. I mean, that would definitely was a pretty big difference for sure. Scrolling through, you can probably get the idea that, again, the iPhone 12 Pro seems to be a smoother device, but I think the iPhone 7 is still doing a pretty decent job as well. Let's go and do camera. 3, 2, 1. And they both kind of seem to be about the same. Now, as always, I have a bunch of these third-party apps that we can go again into. Let's do Temper Run 2. 3, 2, 1. And you can see the iPhone 12 Pro seems to be doing a little bit of a better job. The iPhone 7 definitely took quite a bit of time. I'm trying to get these centered. And you can see the 12 Pro pretty much was loaded the whole entire time. The iPhone 7 just got done. So definitely the iPhone 7, a little bit slower right there, but totally okay. You know, it's an older phone. We expect that. Gameplay probably will be better on the iPhone 12. So going to do Bofa. 3, 2, 1. And again, the 12 Pro is faster. The iPhone 7, a little bit slower. Totally okay, it happens. Hopping out of this one, let's go ahead and do Dropbox. Three, two, one. 
and you can see iPhone 12 Pro again was faster, iPhone 7 a little bit behind. Let's do the next one, which is Quizlet, 3, 2, 1. And again, 12 Pro is faster, iPhone 7 a little bit behind. Let's go and do something like Snake versus Blocks, 3, 2, 1. And again, the iPhone 12 Pro is faster there, the iPhone 7 a little bit behind. Getting into some gameplay, let's see if there's a big difference. And I'm not planning there to be a big difference, but for sure the iPhone 12 Pro is faster there yet again. Let's do Fruit Ninja, 3, 2, 1. And you can see, I would imagine the iPhone 12 Pro was faster there. It did get into that little pop-up. So the iPhone 12 Pro, I think, was the fast one to load it up fully. But the iPhone 7 wasn't in that pop-up. Let's go ahead and do thank you. 3, 2, 1. And again, the iPhone 12 Pro is faster. The iPhone 7 is going to be a little bit behind. Nothing too crazy there, as typical. Let's go and do Paper I.O., the original one. 3, 2, 1. I don't know if there's an ad in this game, so there may be, so, you know, hopefully an ad loads up on both. As long as it's consistent on both, as you can see, we got into it faster on the 12 Pro, and eventually we do get into it on the iPhone 7, just a little bit behind. But we can go and end it off with stack, 3, 2, 1. And I'm pretty sure the, you know, takeaway of this specific comparison was typically what everyone was already expecting. The iPhone 12 Pro was pretty much the faster phone in every single category. Every single time we tested a phone, you know, between an app between these two, the iPhone 12 Pro was the faster one. So if you're going from an iPhone 7 to the 12 Pro, expect to have much better speed and just have a much better performance overall from something like an iPhone 12 Pro than on, than on the iPhone 7. So that pretty much covers up the speed comparison. Let's go and hit on the cameras. Now, as stated before, the iPhone 7 has a single 12 megapixel sensor, where the iPhone 12 Pro has a triple camera setup, a 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel ultra wide, then, then 12 megapixel telephoto lens with a LiDAR sensor. Pretty much, I think the iPhone 7's camera is going to be extremely good no matter what you do with it. It has a good enough, you know, camera for a 2016 phone in 2020. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. You know, it has a lot of problems, has a lot of glitches. But when you consider the fact that this phone came out in 2016, it really makes a lot of things justifiable in my opinion. You have 4K on this phone, but you do not have 4K at 60. And even on the front, you can only do 1080p videos on that as well. So take that as you will. You only have a single camera on this thing too, which dates it. As you can see, I am getting some really weird camera little you know, glitches, but I think overall, I think everyone knows who the winner is. The iPhone 12 Pro has always had a lot of capability. It has 4K 60 capability. And even me just doing this little camera thing right here, like the, just looking at this camera lens, it looks so much better than what the iPhone 7 was showing me. Like this is a really decent quality. And I can definitely tell you when it comes down to it, having the ability of shooting 4K 60 on the back, but also having 4K 60 on the front camera as well of the iPhone 12 Pro ha just adds so much more capability to this device. And it really just screams premiumness to me. So definitely when it comes down to both of these, you're going to be getting a far better camera from the iPhone 12 Pro than on the iPhone 7. Now, I also already did a battery life comparison between these two phones as well, and I saw the same thing. The iPhone 12 Pro beat the iPhone 7 by quite a bit, so that pretty much covered that one. So to kind of sum up this comparison and answer the question, should you go and pick up an iPhone 7, a 12 Pro? Should you pick up, should you upgrade an iPhone 7 to a 12 Pro? But what I'll tell you is, is that by all means, if you have an iPhone 7, going to a phone like an iPhone 12 Pro will do you so much justice. You're going to have an insanely good experience with a phone like this. I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro as my main phone for, you know, since day one. And I've been having a really good time with it. It's a, it was horrible in the beginning with, but since iOS 14.3, it's fixed a lot of things, which I'm really happy about. And I think definitely going from an iPhone 7 to an iPhone 12 Pro is, you know, a really good upgrade, probably the best one you can do right now. But you still have some capability with this phone. I, I don't think it's like an emergency type of thing where you have to go from an iPhone 7 to the 12 Pro. I think you still have quite a bit of time. You still have, you know, iOS updates on this thing. It's still IP certified. It still has an okay camera for the most part. The speed and performance is still there. You still have quite a bit of capability. It's not like this thing is going to be outdated tomorrow. You, it's still pretty okay for the most part. And a lot of people still own this thing too. So you're in good company. But definitely when you have a phone like an iPhone 12 Pro, if you can pick one up for a really good price, even brand new, it's worth it in my opinion. It's definitely, I mean, it's one of the best phones you can buy. So obviously it's worth it. But 
I think also going from an iPhone 7 to an iPhone 11 is also a really, really big upgrade as well. You're going to have an insanely good experience with it. It's going to be just as smooth almost as the iPhone 12 Pro. Maybe not as smooth, but it's going to be really smooth. And you're going to have a really good time with the iPhone 11 as well. It's not like there's only like two phones in the market. It's not like you have to pick up the 12 Pro. The iPhone 12 is also a really good option, but I think the iPhone 10R even is a really good option from an iPhone 7 as well. So take that as you will. That's pretty much the time, you know, how it's some of the specific comparison. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.